Hello, I'm going to start with a question today to help you understand something about yourself. Just look at the question that you see on your screen and tell me the feeling that you get. How do you feel when you look at something like this? Do you feel scared because you don't know how to solve something like this? Or do you feel, I can solve it, but I'll probably take a lot of time. If your heart said yes to any of these two questions, then you're in the right place. Hi, my name is Shweta. I am the lead quant SME at EGMAD. And in this video, I'm going to give you a sure shot method to solve such inequalities or even more complex inequalities in a jiffy. By the end of this video, you will have used this solid method on three different inequalities, including the one that you saw at the beginning. And at the end, I will give you three practice questions on which which I will give you feedback. So stay tuned till the end. Now, I know we have to start learning that hard inequality, but that's not where we're going to begin. We will start at a slightly smaller level, something that's less hard, this inequality, which has two factors instead of three that we had at the beginning. So let's understand this. And through this example, I'm going to help you build a process, the method that I was talking about. Okay, let's get started. Now here, what you have to do as step one is take each of these factors that you have. One factor is x minus two and the other factor is x minus three. And you are going to put your factors equal to zero one by one. So what's going to happen here is, for example, when I put x minus two equal to zero, I get x equal to two. And when I put the other factor equal to zero, I get x equal to three. What am I doing this way? Why am I putting my factors equal to zero? This way, the two values of x that I am getting, these are the values at which my expression is equal to zero. Yes, the question wants it to be greater than zero as you see here, but I am first finding where it's equal to zero. You'll understand how this is going to help, but this is precisely your first step. Now, these values of x are called break points. So step one is precisely this to find the break points of your expression. All right. Second step. Once you have your break points, you will draw a number line and place them on the number line according to the order. So the smaller number goes on the left and the larger one goes on the right. So two on the left and then three on the right. That's it. So second step, simple, put it on the number line, nothing else. Third step is where you start drawing something. You will draw a wave. And because of this wave, we call this method the wavy line method because you're going to draw a wave here. Now, all of the rest that I'm going to say, most of it is going to be how you draw this wave. That's a huge part of the method. How you draw this wave, there are some rules you have to understand. First is that when you draw a wave, you're going to start from the top right hand corner. Start from the top right hand corner. What do I mean by top right hand corner? Here you see this is the top, this is the bottom. So this is first of all how we're talking about top and bottom which is above the number line and below. Now top right is going to be this region here. This would be bottom right. I don't want bottom right. I want top right. This would be top left. So I'm just explaining how you understand what I'm saying. So this is my top right hand corner. This. This is where I will start drawing my wave from. After that, what am I going to do? How will my wave move from one place to the next? I mean, how will the move wave be drawn? This is just the starting point. Well, you will move towards Next break point. Let me just call them BPs here, break points. So you move towards the next break point. Now, what does that mean? Let's understand this. So here I'm starting. I move towards the next break point. The closest break point to this region is three. So my wave moves towards three as it did here. Then again, follow the same thing. It will move to the other break point, which is two. But how will it move? Will it go above? Will it go below? How? Well, that's your third point here. You will cross the number line at this break point and go to the other side. Cross and go across basically. So here you cross cut the number line at three, cut would be a better word. You cut it at the break point and go to the other side. So you have right now seen how I moved from above to below the number line. Then again, repeat the steps, move towards the next break point, which is two, 
cut the number line here go to the other side and that's it the moment you cover all of the regions your wave is complete this is the main part of this now once you have the wave after this it's just about being able to read the solution so for that you need a very simple thing what is that wherever this wave is above the number line so wave above the number line would mean that your expression is positive and your wave below the number line would mean your expression is negative there. So what I do here is I will read my region. I will see where is it above, where is it below. I'm just drawing it again so that you can see only the above and below part. This is what I had, two and three. Where is it above the number line? here and here in the regions beyond 2 and 3 so this is where my expression is going to be positive and this region where it is below the number line between 2 and 3 this is where my expression is going to be negative and that's it then you just see what your question wanted your question as you see here on top wants it to be greater than zero you see this here in the question so if you want it to be greater than zero which region do you want i just showed you that above the number line corresponds with being positive and therefore your final answer is going to be all of this region where it's above the number line and the final answer therefore for this inequality is x less than 2 or x greater than 3. That's it. All of these values of x are going to work. That's it. This is the method. Pause the video, watch it again if you want to, although I'm going to do another example where I will demonstrate the same method. Now, because you've understood it the first time, the second time you're going to see how fast it is. So just check this out with me. All right, let's see. This is your second inequality. Same story, follow the same steps. Step number one, find the breakpoints. I'm not going to write all the steps. I will just do it smartly this time. So I'll put my factors equal to zero one by one and these are the breakpoints I'm gonna get. Once I get my breakpoints, I'm gonna put them on the number line like this. Then I'm going to start my wave from the top right hand corner, go to the next breakpoint, cut it, go to the other side, similarly move to minus two, cut and go across. I have my wave. It's gonna be positive, the expression is gonna be positive beyond minus two and three, and it's gonna be negative here. My question wants it to be negative, as I can see here from the question itself. So where is it negative? Wherever it's below the number line. And my final answer is this, everything between negative two and three. You saw how quick this was because you built a method. Once you have this method, this robust scalable method, you're gonna see how efficient you get at solving these. The fear that is associated with such inequalities will vanish if you understand this method correctly. Now, I'm actually gonna give you something interesting. I'm gonna give you a version of this inequality. What version is this? Let's check it out. So this is the question I'm talking about. And what's the only change? For a second, I want you to see these two together. The only change is in the second factor. Look at that carefully. While the first factor is the same in both of them, x plus two and x plus two, the second one here is x minus three, here it's three minus x. So that's the difference. And that's how I created this second version. Now this is an exercise for you. Tell me, will you follow the exact same approach that I just taught you with those two examples? Or will there be a slight manipulation that you will have to do? That's an exercise for you. Observe what you've learned in the examples and the two questions we did and try to apply that here. See what you can do. It's a challenge. Put all of your answers in the comments. I'm going to read each of them and get back to you. For now, this, because it's for exercise, takes us to the next level, which is this question. Before we move on, tell me how are you enjoying the video so far? If you've liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss more such content. This video is a part of a series. There are going to be more videos to take your understanding to the next level. I'm sure you don't want to miss this. I'm going to see you in those videos. For now, let's continue. Remember, this is what we started with. This is the hard question I had showed you at the top. Now, the best part is nothing changes. My method 
will not change. I will still get breakpoints. Again, the places where these factors are equal to zero, I'm going to get four, negative two, and three. I'm going to put them on the number line. So the smallest one is which one? Negative two. Then there's three, then four. So you always need to put them in order, just like how they would be on a number line. Then start drawing your wave from the top right hand corner. Same story. Go to the next nearest break point, cut it, cut the number line here and go to the other side. Then again, move to the next break point, cut and go across, next break point, cut and go across. And that's it. So this one should meet at two. I'll just draw it again so that there's no scope for confusion. Here. Now, where is it above the number line? Two places. I see it between minus two and three and I see it beyond four. So greater than four. And where is it below the number line? That's happening here and here. So it's between three and four and less than minus two. These are two regions. But what do I want in my question? I want less than zero. Check this out here. That means I want the region where my wave is below the number line. So I just saw where that is. No, that's here one place and here second place using this I'm just going to write my final answer everything less than minus 2 and everything between 3 and 4 I am done just see how easy this was it looked crazy I agree first time I saw this I was also pretty intimidated by this but now onwards I hope this is not going to scare you at all I'll just summarize the entire method for you so it's written nicely here take a screenshot of this read it in your own time everything that I said is here with more it's it's more detail so the format that we tackled here was wherever you have zero on the right side then there's an inequality and then whatever expression. So this is the first step. You convert it into this form. Now that's basic algebra. So you can do that. Then your expression should be as factors, just as we saw. If it's not already that, you need to factor it. Again, that's something you know. Then you mark your breakpoints, you draw your wave and find your desired range based on above and below the number line. That same thing. Finally, you know, I'm not going to leave you this way practice questions. So this is the first one that I already talked about in the video. Remember the challenge I gave you? And these are two more that you need to do. Okay, the number. So this is number two and number three. So put your answers in the comments. Just follow a simple format. You will write your answers like this, a three liner, one, two, and three. For the first one, just put the range, whatever it is, simple. You don't have to use any words or any sentences to say the answer for this is this or that. Nothing. Just put the exact range all right now this is going to be a very interesting discussion more so because this was a challenge that we put in and again remember I'm going to read each of these and I'm going to see how how many of you managed to get this correct more videos will be coming up where we will be covering the different types of inequalities there are some more twists that I'm going to teach you in upcoming videos to make sure that you get those subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if you enjoyed this one I'll see you again happy learning